Hey guys, today we're looking at lesson 5-4, use partial quotients to divide. We did skip a lesson, um, it's using area models to divide, but I feel like we'll still be fine if we don't use that. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next lesson. So before we start, I when I looked at this lesson, I felt like just jumping straight in was not really what we needed to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the independent practice first. They have this really neat example of how to do this right here. So we're going to do this first and then we'll move on to the other problems. All right, so on these examples right here, we have 247 divided by 19. So what we can do is we can say, I can multiply 19 by 10 to give me 190. So that would be 10 groups of 19, which gives you 190. Then you would subtract that and you're left with 57. Now I'm going to need to figure out how many groups of 19 is going to give me into 57. So over here on the side, I'm going to multiply 19 times, I think I can do three groups, but I'm going to multiply and check. So 19 times 3, 9 times 3 is 27. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 is 5. Um, so that's actually going to give me 57. Okay, so this was probably four groups of 19, so that would be 38, and then one group of 19 would be 19. Okay, so that's how you, and then you would add up all of these partial quotients. You would have add 10 plus 4 plus 1, which would give you 15. Okay, so that's what we're really going to be using as partial quotients. I know that y'all talked about that in fourth grade, so hopefully this is not like brand new information. But again, this is just a different way we could use to divide. So let's use that as we're doing this right here. It says, so go back to page 203. A hotel sets up tables for a conference for 156 people. If each table seats 12 people, how many tables will be needed? So we have 156 people, so I'm going to circle that. That's our total amount of people, and each table is going to have 12 people, so we need to figure out how many tables will be needed. Okay, so we're going to do 12, we'll go into 100, oops, not 15, let me restart that. 12 going into 156. Now, just like we did the last time, can I multiply 12 by 10 and give me something that's less than this? Yes, that's going to give me 120. So 120. So we're going to have 10 times 12 equals 120. So I'm going to put a box around my 10. Okay. That way I can see I've got to add this up at the end. Now if I subtract it, I'm left with 6 and 3. Now 12 will go into 36. I know that fact off the top of my head. That's 3. So 3 times 12 equals 36. And I know if I subtract that, I'm left with 0. So then I would add up my partial quotients. 10 plus 3 plus 3 equals 13. And that's all you have to do. Okay, so now on the other example that they give on the back page, because you know they're always going to give us another example, it shows us this box method or the area model. So this is a theater has 375 seats arranged in rows with 15 seats in each row. How many rows are in this theater? Let R represent the number of rows. So we're thinking 15 times R, which is our number of rows, equals 375, or that's the same thing as 375 divided by 15 equals R. So this area model is going to show us. So we have our numbers that we would multiply together, and we have to figure out what these top numbers are. So 15 times what is going to give me 300? So we know that that would be 20. And so then we would have, we've broken it up by 75. So 15 times what? equals 75, that's 5, and then you would add up your two unknown sides. So it would be 25. 
Okay, again, that's why I kind of skipped this because I felt like that might be a little too confusing, a too little, um, I don't know, just, it was confusing for me to have to teach it to you and I didn't want to confuse y'all. I felt like this partial question right here would be a better way. So let's, let me grab a scrap piece of paper and I want you to do the same and we're going to do this next part. All right, so I went, I got my scrap paper. So we're going to do number one. It's 233 divided by 11. Okay, so now if I multiply 11 times 10, I, I say 11 times 10 or whatever my first number is times 10 because typically we can get it in there at least 10 times. So that makes it a little easier for us. So I know that 11 times 10 is 110, 110. So then I'm going to subtract that three, two, one. So now over here to the side, I have 11 times 10. 10 is the number that we needed to find products, which gives us 110. So 10 is the number that I'm adding up at the end. Now 11 will go into 123. I know that that'll go into it 11 times. So 11 times 11 equals 121. So 121 subtracted, I'm left with two. Now, can 11 go into two at all? No. So that would be our remainder. So we would have a remainder of two. So our, our quotient though is 10 plus 11 10 plus 11, which gives you 21. So you have 21 with a remainder of two. Because sometimes you will end up with a remainder. Now, if your remainder is bigger than your original number, you know you did something wrong. You gotta go back and double check because your remainder can't be bigger than your original number. Just, just a reminder. All right, let's do this one right here. 15 into 210. 15, 210. Now, I can multiply 15 times 10, which gives me 150. So I'll go ahead and do that. 15 times 10 equals 150. Okay. I don't, if you don't put all this on the side, that's fine, but you do have to put that 10 because that's what you're adding up at the end. Okay, so I'm going to subtract that. I'm left with 0, 15, 21 minus 15 equals 6. Now I know that 15 will go into 60 five times. So 15 times, is it five times? No, it's not five times. It'll go into it four times. Four times 15 is 60. So that would go into it evenly. And if you're like, I don't remember how many times for what 15 times four is, again, work it out on the side, double check yourself if you need to. That way you have the right answer. So that's zero, so there's no remainder. So then we would add up 10 plus four equals 14. So 14 would be your answer. So that's my answer on my paper. All right, and let's do number four together. I know this is a little different than maybe what you're used to, but we're gonna keep going through these. 13 divided into 286. Again, I know I can do 13 times 10. I'm gonna put a box around 10. That's gonna give me 130. So 130 subtracted, I'm left with six, five, one, I can do that again, 13 times 10 equals 130, which gives me, if I subtract it, 6, 2, 0, and 13 will go into 26. I know that one two times. If you didn't, you could just multiply it to check yourself. 13 times 2 equals 26. It'll go into it evenly, so I've subtracted and I'm left with zero. Now I add up all my boxes, 10 plus 10 plus two, 10 plus 10 plus two equals 22. So that would be our final answer is 22.
All right, now I want you to get, I want you to do number five. So I want you to pause the video and then after you finish it, unpause it. All right, so this is what I got. I got 23 and that's how I got my answer. So double check and make sure you did it. And then I put my answer on my blank. Now I want you to do one more on your own. I want you to do number six on your own. So let's do 960 divided by 32. Again, same thing. I want you to pause the video and then play to check your work. All right, so this is what I got. I got 30 and there's my work. I did it times 10 each time, which gave me 30 at the end. Okay. All right, so I feel like if you have this, yay. Um, you might want to go back and rewatch some of the steps. If you didn't get these two, um, go back and rewatch the steps or raise your hand so that I can come and help you with these. So, what I want you to do on your own is I want you, let me actually, let me put my answer for this one. Okay, now I want you to do number eight, number nine, number 11 and number 15. Okay, 8, 9, 11, 15. Let's flip to the back. Okay, let's do number 17, number 20, and 22. Alright, 17, 20, and 22 on the back. And then once you're done, um, I want you to hold on to it because we'll probably be checking over it unless I tell you otherwise. Also, I'm so sorry if you heard whining today. I had a little helper chip. I had a little helper this morning. All right, y'all have a super fantastic time doing this math. Bye, guys.